Hello YouTube. I finally finished the tedious task of getting this video from getting my 10 pointer together. It's amazing how much footage there was to go through from the 15 days I was down there total with some mornings and night hunts. So in the interest of trying to keep this not too long of a video, I sped up a lot of the middle footage. I hope you like what I put together. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Two bucks showed up, both six pointers, counting the eye guards. I guess you could call one of them a seven because he had a little sticker on the left side. But the big buck hasn't shown, so we'll see. Okay, well, here we are opening evening. First evening set of the trip. And, uh, Hopeful. The nice ten pointer has been coming around every seven days and he's due. So we'll see what happens. The second morning hunt was fairly uneventful. Saw a few small bucks, plenty of does, does with their fawns. It's always fun to watch uh, the deer interact with each other. Well, it's Sunday evening. Sitting about four o'clock. About a half hour of showtime. Uh, we'll see what comes in tonight. So I'm going to point out that at the beginning of November, like we are right now, bucks don't really hang out around the feeders. They, uh, they're they going to come through, they're going to sneak and peek. Basically, uh, it's early before the rut, so so they're not really going to be hanging out long. They're just kind of checking them in, showing up, getting back out of there. And that was exactly the case with this 10-pointer. He did not hang around and stay still very long. This footage starts right after my daughter's hunt. I drove her back and went back the very next day and this was uh, that Monday night. This is the part that I sped up pretty fast, condensed it, uh, wasn't able to put everything that I filmed in because it would have just taken too much time and, and it was fairly uneventful so there was really no point in glorifying too much of this part of it. As you can see, there was plenty of deer activity, so it was fun, interesting, and uh, like I said, it's it's really nice to to watch the deer interact with each other, how the the does with their fawns sense danger, communicate it to each other. Here we are the next morning. Nothing's really changed. It's only been about three days since Kayla shot her deer. So I don't think the environment's really recovered. I've noticed that after a deer gets shot, you still see some of the usual show up, but overall traffic's not near as high as when you get away from it by a week or so. Highlights from uh, that trip before
Well, here we are a week later, and the rut is in full swing now. Everything's chasing those anywhere from spikes to little sixes. So after the first morning hunt, I pulled the camera footages, took them back to the trailer and reviewed them. And this was the first time that I saw this buck in any kind of a close to daylight hours. He'd been nocturnal since day one. So I was pretty pleased to see this because this means that I might get a chance at it. So here we are the next morning. There's a little bit of fog, but not much. Always like to see fog because it can uh, bring in the big bucks. Lots of deer showed up, but not the deer. Now we're into morning three of this trip and uh, still hopeful. You never know when he might show up. Again, morning three was uneventful. Going into the fourth morning, still very, very warm days. And it's just not fun sitting in a blind in the afternoon when it's in the 70s. It's more of a sweat box. Well, here we are, a little bit of fog, and guess what? He shows up. Not really surprised to see him eating. 
He's pretty much been starving himself through the rut, but he's still very much focused on does, and he's very weary and uh, never really stays in one place very long. At this point, I'm staying calm, thinking I have some time, so I'm not in a big rush. He's at 300 yards, so it'd be nice to get him a little closer, but he starts leaving and chasing does. See, he just left and came back. I cut out the time he was gone, but he was gone for five minutes before he came back. He leaves four or five times, and every time he leaves and comes back, I start getting a little worried that I'm not going to get a shot, so I get a lot more ready to make one and looking for an opportunity right now. So the closer feeder went off, and it's kind of funny. It's kind of nice watching these does around a big buck like this. They act a lot different than when they're around a, a young buck. Uh, they're like posing for him and, and really uh, very much into him. Most of my observations with the lesser bucks are that the does don't even want to be near them because uh, I guess they're not dominant, but with well, this boy here, they're just nice and calm, and of course I don't think these does are right in season right now, but there's definitely one in season nearby because he keeps taking off. You can hear me wrestling around in the background. I'm getting ready for my shot. I'm just waiting for the right opportunity, hoping he's going to give me a good shot, and then there he goes again. So by now I'm pretty much thinking that I'm just going to need to make the shot when I can get it.
every time he leaves, I'm starting to get the feeling that at some point he's not going to come back. So more and more I'm thinking that even if it's even almost a moving shot, I'm going to need to take it. But I really, at 300 yards, would rather than have him standing still. There you go. It all came together. Well, there it is. Got it done. I hope this wasn't too uh, long to watch. I tried to condense those 15 days into as short as possible and keep it interesting. Thanks for joining us.